and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. We are contemplating the heart of the first brother and priest, of the pierced hearts of Jesus and Mary. The original witness of this moment, which is the birth of our charism, and contemplating this vision that our mother founders had in 1990, when the Lord was looking for a congregation to console his heart, seeing her, seeing Our Lady, perhaps we can also imagine the Lord contemplating each one of us and contemplating us, afterwards placing his gaze and his eyes upon St. John. Because St. John is the disciple that truly consoled the heart of Christ. And why? Because the treasure of John was the heart of Christ. We have two times in the Gospel, chapter 3 and 21, the definition of this disciple whom Jesus loved so much that he was resting his, placing his head on the heart, on the chest of Jesus, listening to the heartbeat. This and Jesus entrusted the mysteries of his heart to his disciple, who didn't want to only touch his heart, but also enter into the love, unfathomable love of his heart, to understand the gestures, the logic, the science of the love of Christ. Also, Jesus entrusted to this disciple the greatest and most beautiful treasure of his heart, which is the heart of his Blessed Mother, where from the cross Jesus told St. John, Behold your mother. What kind of a heart that Jesus could entrust his own mother to St. John? What kind of virtue, simplicity, love, maturity to receive this treasure, filial love, of Christ for his son. And so St. John can enter the proper place of Christ to receive to custody and to enter into the school and the home of the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. John may be the beloved disciple of Christ and the beloved disciple of the Blessed Virgin Mary. and sharing with her the, eye, the years in Ephesus, the years that she kept carefully in her heart. St. John also was entrusted with the Petrine principle. That we contemplate that at the conclusion of the Gospel of St. John, St. John is always with St. Peter. St. Peter is not ready to enter into his own place, but St. John understood why it would be important to be close to Christ. He understood very well who St. Peter was. And so the first 
the first chapters, St. John to St. Peter, and St. John always next to St. Peter, opening a path for St. Peter, so that St. Peter can become the rock over which the Lord can build his house. St. John understood the dignity of the vocation of the Petrian principle in the church. Jesus entrusted the, tre the most important treasures for his own heart and flesh in the Eucharist, the heart of his mother, his blessed mother, and the responsibility of guarding the truth in the heart of the church. What kind of heart, communion of love. Today is a day to enter the footsteps of St. John as the grace to also listen to the heartbeats of Christ, receive anew our Blessed Mother as our all, to enter her and live in the school of her heart so that Jesus could freely guide us in our own vocations. We conclude with these words of Mother, our Mother Founders, preached in the year 2012 on this day. It's in the school of the heart of Our Lady where we learn to be witnesses. Hearts that are formed with the capacity to persevere the presence of God made man, the signs of God in our time, in our life, in our institute. In her school, the witnesses learn to contemplate the depths of of Christ, the truly liberating truth of his gospel, the luminosity of all his mysteries that have been revealed to us in the face of the child Jesus and in the school of the gospel, which is the school of the pierced heart of Christ, all for the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary.